Yeah. Dina's decided to join me. I'm not sure if she thinks I need help or if I just need some company. But anyway, we'll see what she does for the rest of this little lesson. The only thing that I did not like about speaking when I first started, believe it or not, was not the actual cutting. It was having to use a sewing machine to go up each side here with thread and to reinforce the stitches and then cut up the center. The sewing machine thing terrified me. Cutting, not a problem. So then I discovered Make Swanson's crochet edging for steaking. Fell in love with that, used that for several years. And now our designer, Karen, <coughs> sorry about that, our designer, Karen, has come up with a hand sewing method of securing steaks. Now this is going to be the first time I've done this. I think it's going to be fantastic. I just wanted to tell you it's the first time I've done it. Let me show you really quickly what we're doing. Okay, this is your steak. Okay, and you've got all your stitches at the steak. Now the other thing you need to remember is that when you do the last round of your sweater, you need to cast off those five steak stitches so that when you cut up through, they don't come unraveled. It's the only thing you need to remember before you are ready to steak. Anyway, I have five stitches in my steak. What I'm going to do, because I'm a little bit of a chicken and I always overdo this, is first I'm going to just use a running stitch and go down the very center of my steak to give myself a visual aid and keep so I can keep on track when I'm doing the sewing. Okay, the thing with Karen's design for securing the steak is you need to actually sew down the center of the stitches, not in between the stitches. Now remember, a knit stitch looks like a V. So what you're going to be doing is running your back stitch right through these stitches. Now, if you wanted to, you could go in one set and be a little closer to the edge. It's completely up to you. I think I will probably, since I only have five stitches, I will probably run my back stitching closer to the edge. Okay? Now, let me show you exactly how I prep to be able to do this. I need a contrasting yarn to go up the front of the sweater and a blunt needle. Now you see I picked a nice bright red. Okay. And I'm going to start at the bottom. Find the middle of my five steaks. Actually, you know what? Now that I look at this, I think it's easier to start at the top because my stitches are loose here. Not all folded over at the cast on. So here's my fifth stitch. That's the V, and I'm just going to, I mean, it's just sloppy, guys. You don't have to work at this very hard. All you're going to do with your nice big blunt needle is run big, huge running stitches right down the center. Okay? Now, when I get finished with that, I'll come back and show you how to get ready to do the back stitching to secure the other stitches. So now I have finished putting in my basting stitch. See how nice it shows up? That's why you want to get a yarn that is so completely contrasty to the bottom, to the body of your sweater. Now, I even did the little bit part up in here, which brings me to a mistake that I do all the time, and I don't know why I keep repeating it. When I prepared for my kangaroo pouch opening, I should have cast off these five steak stitches, which, of course, you can see I forgot to do. So what I'm going to do is go back and pick up these stitches onto a pair of needles and use an extra piece of the body yarn and just do a quick little cast off. It'll be a little sloppy, and I'll have to secure it carefully, but that's what you get for being forget. You know, that's what you get for being forgetful. There you go. Anyway, you can see now where I'm all nice and marked out. 
The reason why you want such a contrasty yarn to help you keep track is because ideally when you start to do the back stitching, you want to find a yarn that is very close to the body color because you just don't want it showing. It's not likely to show because it's going to get folded up, but to be particular, just go ahead and try to find it. Now this happens to be, I absolutely pure luck, happens to be one of our palette yarns and it was just very close. But if you can find, you know, go through any of your sock yarn stash, what you want is a fingering weight yarn. That's all that matters. And you want to use a sharp needle. Now this isn't a quilting sharp needle. It's a knitting sharp needle. Everything's relative for us knitters. But you know, there's the classic totally blunt needle, which is the one I used to run the thick stitches through. You can see the difference. See, this is the big blunt, 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 blunt needle. That was for the main one. This one's got enough of a point that I can get it in between strands of stitches. And that's how you're going to start. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and start with the lower part here because you're going to do it separately anyway. And I'm just going to give you an example and then I'm going to have to go back and get this all cleaned up. But I want to give you an idea of how it works. I've changed my mind. Gee, what else is new? I am going to work in just one section from my center. So if I'm going down the center of the center stitch, what I want to do is go down the center of the stitch next to it, and I'm back stitching. Ideally, I want to use the sharp needle and always pick up a little bit of yarn. And I'm going to go in and a back stitch. My uh, sewing skills leave a lot to be desired. You can see right there, I don't want to come in from the front. I want to come in from the bottom so I don't have a thread sticking out. So here we go. Right from the beginning, Kelly has absolutely no clue how to sew. We come through here, okay? Then you go up and you go halfway through Actually, you know what? The more I look at this, I'm going to change my mind one more time. Can you believe this? I told you I've never done this technique before, so I get to change my mind and explore a little bit. But I feel more comfortable, actually, I think, starting at the bottom, coming through, and actually working my way up. All you're trying to do is backstitch. And every time you make the back stitch, and that's why you have to be able to have visual aids because these colors are going to just blend right in there, which is great. But see, now I'm going to take a little bit bigger. And Karen suggests that you make these stitches fairly small. Now, I'm probably, I'm doing this all just to show you, and that's fine. I'm probably going to go back, and when I do it slowly for myself, I will probably take smaller stitches, but look how it completely disappears in there. Then I come back halfway down, make my big stitch up again. Yeah, I'm really a lot more comfortable working like this, working up the sweater. See? Then I pull it. Then I can kind of keep track, and I come back halfway down make a big, and when I say halfway down, see I've come back up, and so between where it came up last time and where I come up the second time, that's where I go in between that, and so if you look, I'm kind of making kind of a big stitch here, and when I come back down, it's going to be in between where I came out here and where I came out here, see? It's just back stitching. If you've done embroidery or any of those lovely things, Again, back stitching through. I do think I need to go back and make these stitches a little smaller. I am making them larger just to sort of help you. I think Karen would probably recommend really working just two stitches at a time. I'm kind of skimming over three or four, and I don't think she'd be very happy with me right now. But see, now I'm going to get a little bit smaller. Oh, you can hear a dog in the background, can't you? I don't know who that dog is. We'll see if Zena hears it or not. Anyway, I'm going to continue on, and what I'm going to do is run this back stitch all the way up the right-hand side of my runner, 
continue it on up the right hand side of this little bit of net. Then I'll go down, do the exact same thing, the exact same distance again, right up this side. And that's going to take me a little while, so I'll have to come back and show you what it looks like, and then we cut.